Starting with the first verse, John 20. Let us all stand. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, say early, early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciples were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, the other disciple being John, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen clothes lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. Then the disciples went away to again again to their own home. I want to talk this morning just for a few moments, just for a few moments today to just remind us of what God is doing to allow you not to be constipated in the word, but you have application that you can go forth this day. I want to preach afresh and very few times, this is probably in seven years that I've been pastoring this church, this is the first time probably that I am going to preach an Easter sermon because God has placed that in my spirit. What I want to talk to you about that is so amazing that brings application in your life, I want to talk to you about God's surprise at the tomb. Tell your neighbor, God's surprise at the tomb. Say it again. God's surprise at the tomb. You may be seated. I know this is a big place. I know this is a big house. I plan to be through in 10 minutes. Only if I can hear you say amen. But if I can't hear you, I will assume that you don't understand and I have lost you and I will be labor in time to make sure that you understand what saith the Lord. Can I get an amen? Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get a bless his holy name? I want to walk through this with you, my brothers and sisters. I want to walk through this because there's something in here. There's several things in here that are very important to you. There are things in here that are applicable to your life where you are today. This is not an accident. This is not an accidental occasion. This is not something that I created or new birth for you to be here today. But God ordained before the foundation of the earth that you be here today because he has a word for you, a word for today, a fresh word. Say a fresh word. A fresh word always brings and birth life. Some of you are about to get impregnated with the word of God. Tell your neighbor you're about to get pregnant. Hello. <laughs> the Easter surprise at the tomb. Somebody said, well, I'm already pregnant. I can't take no more. That's all right. You're about to have delivery. Holler delivery. <laughs> We find in this text, my brothers and sisters, we find in this text, and follow with me because all I'm going to do is walk through it. It says, now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, and while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. One of the things that you have to understand, and one of the things that you understand about a surprise, a surprise is something that comes kind of unexpected. It, it's amazing, something that happens that just kind of catches you off guard. And when you look at this, and when you understand that when Jesus brings about a surprise, or when God brings about a surprise, it always catches you off guard. Many times when you were just about to give up, and your deliverance came, it came by a matter of surprise you did not expect that you didn't know how God was coming but somehow God came when the way you thought he was going to come he didn't come he tapped you on the back and said surprise I'm here on the backside and placed a way out of nowhere God is always into surprises 
But the amazing thing about it is, an amazing thing that happens with most of us saints, most of us saints miss the surprise of God because we have a merry spirit. We miss the surprise of God because we're not looking for God to come into our life. We're not looking for things to happen. Many of us in here today are celebrating death. Let me say that again real quietly. Many of us in here today are celebrating death. Because when you think about it, there's not that much going on in your life. A matter of fact, your dreams are gone. Things that you hope for, you don't even hope for anymore. Many of us have become settled and satisfied in our situation that all we do now is have occasional spiritual pity parties. Many of us, even if and that God had touched you this day to see another day, many of us think that our lives are behind us. Hello, somebody. And we're living in a dead situation, and that is not what God has ordained. God has put something inside of you. His name is the Holy Ghost, and with the Holy Ghost being inside of you, he resonates a joy, a joy that transcends circumstance, a joy that says, if I was touched today, that means that I am not just a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror, and I shall press on this day because the best is yet to come. Tell your neighbor the best is yet to come. Let me show you this because God wants to pull you out of this dead situation because when we look at Mary, Mary went to this tomb and what she had always dreamed about, what she had always hoped about, what she had had in her spirit that brought her joy, she thought was dead. And the amazing thing about it, she did not go to the tomb to celebrate resurrection. She went to the tomb to cry. Isn't that kind of ridiculous? It's kind of, it, it, it kind of bab uh, boggles your mind to understand. Mary went to the tomb to cry. Do you understand that? No, but, 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 and most of you sit there, well, if I was Mary, I would not have done that. I would not have gone to the tomb to cry. No, I, I don't even, I can't even concede that. But how many times do you visit back your broken dreams and your lost hopes and you sit up and weep over what you thought you could have had and should have had and wanted and you look back and all you do is sit up at the tomb of life and weep and weep and weep, not believing that God, the one that started and began a perfect work in you, shall complete it but yet you sit there you cry over your children you cry over your marriage you cry over your finance you cry over everything weeping and forgot the scripture that says weeping may endure but somebody forgot that morning comes and the bible says what comes in the morning and when joy comes, joy always catches you by surprise. Joy will start you shouting in the midst of a valley. Joy will get you in your desert situation and you'll start crying and ain't nobody bothering you. When joy hits you, you got to give up your little, your little dead stuff. And you got to move. Watch this. Let me run through this real quick because I'm getting tied up on that first part. Here she goes. She comes. She comes to the tomb. She comes early and she visits early. It is the first day of the week. She comes to cry. She brings that she might anoint, or, or, and anoint the body. And here she reaps and weeps over her ex-dreams, her hopes, everything. And now it's hopeless and she's having a spiritual pity party. She's having a spiritual pity party on Easter. <laughs> Can you imagine how many of us cry and weep and hurt and get in pain and result to things that are ungodly for a relief of pain when you think that everything is over? Mary thought everything was over. Mary thought everything was over and she started to cry 
Do you not understand that according to God's rule, when everything is over, according to man, God has just begun? God had just begun his work when Christ went to the cross. It was not the finale. It was the beginning. And any time in your life when you're following Christ and you think by man's standards that everything is over, you better step back because that's the time that that God begins his work. God begins when every man and everything that man created has already failed you. And after you've been through everything, went to everybody, prayed every prayer, went through every recipe, did every book, then God comes stepping in, bold on his throne, and say when the eulogy had been, it ain't over, it's just started. The first thing that she did early in the morning, and I think that we got a bad picture of Mary because many things I read and thought about of Mary I did not understand in this text, and I said some things that were wrong, and I, I asked the Lord to repent. I, I repented. Listen to what Mary did because here's where most of us are. She saw the stone that sealed Jesus' body in Joseph's tomb. She saw that it had been moved. Say it's been moved. The stone is rolled away. Now, this surprised Mary. What's this? Look at verse 2. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved. And she said this to them. They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they've laid him. Did you catch that? I used to preach that Mary was the first evangelist that ran out to proclaim the good news of the resurrection. She wasn't running to talk about resurrection. A matter of fact, Mary didn't even go look in the tomb to see if he was still there. She saw evidence that something came out. But she did not go deep enough to find out what happened. You see, God will give you evidence that something happened. But you cannot just look at it and run. You've got to go a little deeper to find out what God has done. See, see, you got to understand this. See, see, the Lord moved the stone not for Jesus to get out. He moved the stone that others could come and see that he's not there. Now, you need to understand that. See, God is moving things out of your way that if you investigate deep enough, you will find that he didn't do what the folk said. He didn't condemn you like the folk said. He didn't put you down like the folk said. He didn't leave you sick like the folk said. You'll always be sick. He said, if you come in a little further and investigate... You know, one of the biggest problems we have is too many of us never go deep enough. And God is moving things out of your way that you can see deeper. But Mary had a, a premature conclusion that, that, that he had been stolen. Whenever you look at Mark, Matthew 28, 12, 15, you will find out in that verse that they talked, the Roman soldiers, they paid off folk to say and start a rumor that the body had been stolen. Do you want to know why they did that? They did that because they knew that if folk found out that he was resurrected, that Jesus now is more dangerous dead than he was alive. And so what they did is started a rumor to diffuse the power of God. And instead of Mary investigating to see if Jesus did as he said, she saw a little evidence that he's gone and she accepted what the people said instead of what God said. 
You see, the reason you're in the situation you're in is because the people said you'll never be anything. The reason why some of you are still sick is because the people said God can't heal that. The reason why some of you are broke is because the people said you can't have a better job. The reason why you don't have peace in your home is because Oprah said and everybody else said, but you haven't gone deep enough to find out what God said. It's so amazing how many of us are walking by sight and we look at CNN and we watch the news and we listen to political situations and we find out all the evidence about unemployment. Well, the unemployment is real rough. You can't get a job now. Can't get a job. You cannot get a job if you worship people. You cannot get a job if Clinton is your God. But if God is God, then God will employ you. God will take care of you. God will provide for you. He did it yesterday, and he's the same God today as he was yesterday and forevermore. And the challenge is whether you believe that or not. Mary didn't go far enough, so she saw the stone. She listened to people. It, 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 somebody stole him. How many nights have you cried because you believe somebody stole God? You know, you got saved, you were happy, you were moving with him, you were walking with him. But somehow, God's disappointed some of you. He really hasn't disappointed you, it's just that you haven't waited long enough. But some of you in here today, on this Easter day, are mad with God. God took your spouse, God took your child, God did this, God did that, God did this, and, and you've allowed folk to steal God. You don't even really realize why you're here. You really don't believe you just came because something wouldn't let you leave. See, once you're in Christ, you can't do the other stuff you used to do and have peace. And even though you wanted to stay in the bed because they sprang the clock up and you lost an hour, your spirit said your body's going to get up this day and go and worship the Lord even if you don't want to. Because when the Holy Ghost got in you, you can't hold him down. Can't hold him down. They, 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 they took him. And Mary did not investigate. She didn't go in. Tell your neighbor, Mary didn't go deep enough. She didn't seek him like she was supposed to. She went running like many of us. And one of the biggest problems of the saints is one of the problems I have is that many church people try to steal my God. Because they look at circumstance and they look at this and they go running. They run in crowds. They run in and they start talking down this and talking down that. I'm tired of sad talking down church folk who's always sitting up and telling me, you ain't going to be healed. One of the worst folk you want to have come see you when you're sick in the hospital is a saint. Because a saint will be sitting up there talking about, if you repent from your sin, God will hear you. No, God has already provided in that way. And if I believe, I don't need to hear your mess. Deep enough. Watch this real quick. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Third verse. Peter therefore went out and the other disciples, and they were going to the tomb, so they both ran together. Here's Peter and John. They're in a race to the tomb, and with the other disciples, he, Pete, John outran Peter and came to the tomb first. John outran him. Got there first. I, I think you need to hear that. They were in a foot race. It's going to make some sense in a moment. John beat Peter to the tomb. But when John got to the tomb, John didn't go in. I think you just put a pin right there. Tell your neighbor, John didn't go in. He got there first. But he didn't go in. Why didn't he go in? I'm going to tell you in a minute. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. This verse. And when John, and when he, stooping down and looking, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following, huffing, puffing, <gasps> scared, all this stuff. He got there and went into the tomb. 
and he saw the linen clothes lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head not lying with the linen clothes but folded together in a place by itself. <laughs> Let me take a side note. I'm going to tell you something. They're crazy. Tell your neighbor, they were crazy. If Jesus took the time to get out of his clothes, And fold them. And fold them. And fold his clothes. Had time. Fold them. He, he, he wasn't leaving messy. Does that sound like somebody stole him? If he had time to fold his clothes, he must have known something. Or what did Jesus know? Well, he knew that these clothes had served their purpose and the time had won out. And he was getting ready to get some new glorified clothes. So he laid his old clothes that he had outgrown and folded them and said, come on, Lord, come get me. Don't move the rock. Just come get me. But before you come get me, I need to go down and get some keys. So if you mind, let me go get the keys and then I'll be back. Tell your neighbor, you missed that. I've said this so many times before. Do you want to know why you're struggling? I'm glad you asked. It's because you won't change clothes. Do you understand? I'm 40. I'm not wearing what I was wearing when I was one. And somebody asked me, why aren't you wearing what you were wearing when you were one? Because if you would wear that, you wouldn't have to spend so much money on your wardrobe. And I said, that would be wonderful if I could wear the diapers and all those things, even to the day. It would be wonderful. But I have grown. You ain't following me. See, when you grow in Christ, you outgrow those old clothes. And whenever he gets ready to take you to a new glory level, he reclothes you with something new that matches your knowledge. But in the midst of reclothing you, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Tell your neighbor, watch this. Somebody falling asleep. Watch this. You missed an hour. Come on, watch this. You'll be home after a while. Watch it. Watch this. When you go home and change clothes, something's going to happen. In the midst of changing clothes, there will be a moment in taking off the old and putting on the new that you're going to be naked. And it's all right to change clothes in private. But if you had to do it in public, what happens is there's so many things that you're hiding. And so many of you have gotten comfortable just being saved. That God is have to take your clothes off and strip you down to get naked again. To show you who brought you in this world. To re-educate you that everything that you have come from him. And then when he denotes you for a while, then he re you and promotes you. See, the reason, why, the reason why God has to strip you is because some of you refuse to grow. Some of you still know the same scripture you learned when you were saved, sanctified, tongue-talking, fire-baptized. You still know that one scripture and no more. 
Your life has not changed. You have not got deeper with the Lord. You have not got deeper with the word. You have not grown anymore. Your lifestyle should be changing. Every once in a while you need to turn back and look and say, things I used to do, I don't do anymore. God has changed me. Places I used to go and didn't think I could get away from. I don't even think about them anymore. I've been saved, set apart, moved up. Have you ever noticed, those of you that have been loving and studying with the Lord, that even stuff folks say now don't bother you? There used to be a time when you would fight if somebody looked at you wrong. Now they'll look at you wrong and you'll turn and get on your knees and pray for them anyhow. God has worked to work in your life. God has allowed you to grow, but your growing came through a pain. It came through a pain. Of him stripping off the old clothes and allowing you to be vulnerable and then covering you. And the things that you thought would happen didn't happen. Have you ever noticed the worst you ever thought would happen never happened? Have you ever noticed that probably half of this place would be empty of the people in here today? If what you thought was going to happen would happen because half of us in here thought we were going to be dead by now? Some of you were headed head on to another car and your car was out of control and all you could do was call Jesus and your car stopped without a scratch. Some of you have been in total loss accidents and walked out without a scratch and God covered you to let you know. There's some of you in there could not lay crack down but one day God got in your life and crack don't bother you anymore. folded his clothes and whenever things get real rough all you got to say to yourself is God must be getting ready to put me on some new glory clothes so I'm not going to resist I'm not going to fight him not only that he took the handkerchief that was around his head and he took it and he folded the handkerchief when you understand that that represented a veil over his face that before he died and was resurrected only few people could see his face but now the Lord said because I've died and I'm getting ready to be resurrected whosoever wants to come to me they can seek my face it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing how many of us in our dead situation have believed the lie that unless you're this or that and do this or that, you can't come to the Lord. It's amazing. On Easter, in your dead situation, because part of the reason your situation is dead is because of your disobedience to God. And so therefore the devil told you, he told you that God ain't going to honor you because you're the one that messed up. No. Jesus said, no, you still can seek my face. I am still going to honor my word. I still love you in spite of. And whenever you're ready to make a change, I am ready and I'll put all of that behind you. It is amazing. How many of us miss blessings of God because we don't come boldly and understand we can come on our own? I need a preacher to pray for me. I need Bishop to touch me. I ain't going to be there. Have you ever noticed when you're really going through, ain't no way around? Have you ever really noticed when you're going through your strongest prayer partner got his answer machine on? Have you ever noticed when you're really going through it appears like every friend, everything that you had has turned this back on you and the only thing you have to do is seek his face and when you seek his face, God will show you his glory and when God shows you his glory... so simple watch this watch this it's amazing look at verse 8 then the other disciple who is John who came to the tomb first then John went in say John went in 
He waited, but now he went in. John went in. What did the text say? When John went in, he saw and what? Peter believed he was stolen. Mary believed he was stolen. John ran to the tomb, outran Peter, stood on the outside while Peter went in. Peter came back out, shaking his head. He's gone. John went in, looked, and believed. I think I know why John didn't go in first because he got there first. I'm going to tell you. I'd like to just make a suggestion that by the time John got to the tomb, he wasn't tired. But he couldn't go in because he was shouting. I, I know that's hard for you to conceive. See, when Peter got there, Peter was tired, but he went in. John couldn't go in because he, he, he was shouting. Isn't it amazing? Some folk don't need a whole lot of evidence. He ran because all he wanted to know was the stone move. Stone was moved. He was out. He didn't listen to what the folks said. He didn't listen to the rumor. He didn't listen to all that. And the reason he didn't listen to that because he was the only one that remembered what Jesus said. Jesus said, on the third day, I shall rise and all power be given to me. And because he remembered what Jesus said. You want to know what your problem is? Memory lapse. You don't remember what he said. You want to know what Mary's problem was? She had two problems. Her first problem was memory lapse. She didn't remember what Jesus said. She didn't understand because she didn't listen to what Jesus said. And then the other problem she had was in verse 1. She went and it was dark. Hear me. There will be some night times in your life when you can't work, when you can't move, where you can't even pray. And you can sit up there and act all sanctimonious as you want to. But there will be periods in your life where it will be so dark you can't get a new word. You can't get down on your knees and concentrate. Everything in your life will seem like it's going to hell. It looks like destruction. It looks like it's all over. That's not the time to investigate. That's the time to believe see in your midnight you ain't got time to be trying to find out a whole lot of things because you can't concentrate you can't get yourself together you're crying you're going through you're this you're that folk are bringing you bad news and this but if all you can do when the midst of everything is gone and it looks like you have no resources and the bills are past due and this and that, something needs to swell up inside of you. Not that I need evidence, but I can remember God said that my God is able to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Do you have evidence? No, I don't have any evidence. All I know is he said it and that's good enough for me because he said it. Because he said it. Because he said it. <laughs> the 
because he said it. It, it. It's amazing. He said it. And then you don't walk by sight no more. You walk by faith. I don't care if he served the divorce papers. What did he say to your dead situation? I don't care if you're in bankruptcy. What did he say about owning the cattle of a thousand hills? I don't care. What the circumstance say? What did he 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 say? He even said in this world. He said, in this world, you shall have tribulation. Tell your neighbor, you're going to have trouble. Oh, you didn't tell him. You're going to have trouble. You're going to go through some things. You're going to endure some things. It's amazing. But he said, I have overcome Please understand, anybody in trouble, God is not working it out. God stopped playing chess. God does not sit there and wait for the devil to make a move and then he makes a move. Well, you got that one, well, I'll get this one. You got that one, I'll get this one. No. God's played the game already, knows what Satan's going to do already, knows where you are already, knew where you were going to be today before you were even born already. Guess what? Whatever you need, he's already worked it out. And if you stop going by what you see and start operating on what he said, God has already provided a way of escape. Your situation is fixed. And so many sit up and talk about how the devil has set you up. You ain't got to worry about the devil setting you up. God has already fixed the setup. Everything the devil does to you, all it does is make the saint get closer to God. The only time the devil can mess with you is when God moves his hand and say, go ahead, try them. See if they'll curse me. And then I'll continue to protect them. God will not allow him to get over on you. And if it seems like you're being overwhelmed, God is complimenting you. God is saying, well, you're tough for me. You're real tough. And I'm going to allow you to see how tough you are. You can take authority in your life. It's amazing because John did not have to go in. He didn't have to go in because he already believed what Jesus said. The ninth verse in that text says that the reason why the others did not believe is because they did not know the scripture. The reason why you turn the drugs instead of Christ in the middle of your crisis is because you don't know the scripture. The reason why you're broke and you're going from paycheck to paycheck, not only financially but spiritually, emotionally, is because you don't know the scripture. The reason why most saints have happiness instead of joy and depending on what's happening dictates how you're going to act is because you don't know the scripture. And we sit up every day like we're watching the soap opera as the world turns, seeing what's going to unfold tomorrow. Let me tell you the end of your story. You won. You won. You rolled off in a cloud of glory. You won. And 
And every time any kind of situation or circumstance tries to overtake you, you can say, well, I'm ready for this ride. But I already know the end of the picture. I've already played it out before the foundations of the earth. And that which God placed in me shall come to pass. Why is it coming to pass? Because he said it. So what's the question? What did he say to you? And a hush went over the dome. Because you want to know why you're suffering so? It's because you don't know what he said to you. Let me give you an illustration real quickly. God has blessed me tremendously. I can remember the day that every time this time of year would roll around, I would be so deep in debt that I was always waiting for my income tax return to bail me out. I wouldn't like y'all. And I would go to church and testify about the deepness of debt. And I know God is going to provide a way out. I knew it because I filed my income tax and knew how much was coming back that was going to bail me out. Can you imagine how much confidence you would walk in when you understand you're already going to get a return from the cross that your name was called at Calvary? That whatever you need, God has already supplied. You already know it's coming. You already know the end. You can get up now and testify about your situation knowing that it's already been worked out. And all you got to know is what God said. Let me wrap this real quick. Because I talked about God's surprise. <laughs> After all of this, isn't it amazing to find out Mary still didn't believe? After all this singing and ministering and preaching, do you realize some of you refuse to hear it and will leave today and go back home and worry? You're going to worry about your child? You're going to worry about this? You're going to worry about that? You're going to try to fix this? You're going to have a headache about that? You're going to sit there and be in knots about this. You're not going to sleep about that. You're going to sit there because what you want to do is the same thing. Do you notice the creature of habit? Because when you move into the next verses, Mary stayed at the tomb to cry. She went to the tomb to cry. Others came and investigated, found out he was gone. Others believed, and after all of that great Easter morning service at the tomb, she refused to believe and said, well, let me sit here and cry some more. Do you know what? Some of you have been miserable so long, you don't want to get out of it. You don't want to be delivered because then you won't have nothing to talk about. Some of you, your friends, don't even want you to call them because all you do is talk about your heartaches. You've been talking about them for years. Can you switch your conversation for a moment and talk about Jesus? Can you tell what Jesus has done in your life? Can you give a witness for the Lord? Can you talk about the victory in your life? Or you just want to sit at the tomb and weep? And what bothers me, you in church all the time. But you want to go back to your dead thing. Tell your neighbor, go back to your dead thing. But even in all of that, God had a surprise. It's amazing because Mary was sitting there alone now. And the Lord came up behind her. And he said, surprise. Mary turned and looked. And 
Didn't know what she was looking for. God gave further evidence. He touched her again. I said, And at that moment, she turned around and recognized it was him. And she hollered out, teacher. Isn't it amazing? For someone who failed at school and couldn't remember what he said at the time of darkness on the exam. Oh, please understand, if we were going to make it in heaven doing our grades on our exam. See, I don't care how much word you can splurt out from Genesis to Revelation when everything is going right in your life. Let me see what you say when you're in the shadows of death, when you're going through. Let me hear what you got to say then. That's the time when you pass the test. That's the time when you whoop the devil. That's the time to claim victory. And she turned around and said, teacher and believed <laughs> isn't it amazing God has a record on surprises did you not know that somebody in here today needs to be surprised let me tell you one thing God is not going to come the way you've been praying for him to come. It would be nice if you hit the lottery, knowing you wasn't supposed to play, but you played anyway. And you justified it, that God knew how hard it was for you. God ain't going to come that way, especially for you. And even if you hit, He's going to send a devourer to come and take that from you. Isn't it amazing? You prayed and you were lonely. And you wanted somebody that looked like Billy D. You wanted somebody that looked like Denzel. You want them tall, dark, handsome, muscular, strong. In this short, round, bald, slew foot. Boleg, man of God came up to you and you said, Pfft. but you couldn't leave him alone for some reason. And you kept looking and you kept looking and you married that one. And that's the one that God placed the joy into. That is the one that God said. He said, surprise. I can put good things in small round packages. I can bring up things that you never thought before. I can give you something tall and handsome, but it might bring you a lot of tall, handsome hell. But I can bring you something short, filled with the Holy Ghost, talking in tongue with the fear of God. When God got ready to surprise folk, the first thing he did, he took Moses and he took Moses and as he took Moses, he said, take my people and get them out of Egypt. And as Moses took his people out of Egypt, they went riding up to the Red Sea. And when they got to the sea, the sea opened up and they crossed on dry land. But Pharaoh with his army came running across and God said, he let the water fold over him and try to clear them all out. God ain't too bad about surprises for those that won't compromise as Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego about to surprise the Bible says that they heated the fire up seven times and then they threw Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego into the fire but when they threw them in the fire and when, 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 the, when the king Nebuchadnezzar got close he counted one Shadrach two Meshach three Abednego! He looked over there. He said, I count one, two, three. Jesus jumped out of the fire and said, Hey! When Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, the 
lions were hungry. They had need for days. The lions looked at Daniel. Said, Daniel, you look mighty good. And when they got ready to eat him, whenever your enemy get ready to eat you, they can get real close. But when they get ready to open up their mouth, God will give them lock jaw. I know he's already served the papers. I know they already said you can't make it. I know they already said you can't have the job. I know somebody already said you can't be delivered. But God, because he got up, God, because he's true to his word, God, because what God said got to happen, God. God's got a surprise. He's got a surprise. And for those that will hold on to his unchanging hand, reach up. Oh, come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. Reach up, reach up, reach up. One hand, one hand, one hand, one hand. <laughs> one hand, one hand, one hand. I, I know they said it's hopeless. Uh-huh. One hand, they don't need two. One hand, one. One for the Father. One for the Son. One for the, uh-huh, one hand. Whatever, whatever you need to fix your dead situation, you can pull it down out of heaven. Now, you ready to pull it? Anybody sick? There's a drugstore. Don't worry if you haven't seen the doctor. They only have one medicine. Anywhere you reach in the drugstore on every shelf is the same thing. What's on the bottle? The bottle says him of his garment. What's the dosage? One touch. Whatever you need, pull it down. Now hold it before you pull it down. Because I'm going to count to three and pull it down. When you pull something down out of heaven, you got to understand God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. When you pull down what you need to straighten out your dead situation, that God will live in your life and bring about the resurrection power in your life, you have to understand God's going to turn you around. It ain't going to be like you thought it was going to be. God does it even better. He'll turn your situation around. We did this one time at Newburgh, but some of you didn't get turned around because the next week you came back the same way. You're going to snatch it down. Turn around how many times? How many times? The first times for who? Oh, I didn't hear that. The first times for who? The second times for who? And the third time is for who? And then when you're through, you better give God the praise and say he's alive and he's risen. Are you ready? On three. One. Whatever you need. Two. Whatever you need. You ready? Hold on a minute. Hold on. Put your hand down. Put it down. Put it down. I got to start all over. 
I got to start all over. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Please understand this. Girlfriend, you ain't getting nothing like this. And I looked over the crowd, and some of you, you ain't getting nothing. You ain't getting nothing. Now, if that's the way you're going to be, sit down. Don't get in the way of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to folk that want to get delivered. I'm talking to folk that want their life changed. I'm talking to people that believe in the resurrection power of God. I ain't talking about them half-hearted, half-wit, not warm, not cold, lukewarm soap that came in here just to be in here. I'm talking about those who understand I serve a risen Savior. You ready? Now, now, if girlfriend is like this, when you pull it down, pull hers down too. Right? Well, some of you struggling with drugs, you might have to get on your tiptoes. Mama used to keep the cookies on the top shelf. One, two, one, two. I'm just doing that. I'm messing with the devil. He's sitting there. He's trying to figure it out. He didn't know this was going to happen. He's trying to get his demons in place. I'm just messing with him. You can't surprise because God is surprising him today. One. Two, three, turn out. Thank you.